So I got a comment on my video yesterday from Words Pictures 997 saying nurturing the list dot 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 it does feel overwhelming. So I wanted to address this um, because if one person commented it, I'm sure a lot of other people might feel overwhelmed. So to break it down in my video, my last video I put out, I was speaking about the importance of email marketing and also the importance of like not just making a sale. So, so many entrepreneurs and business owners who are starting out are so focused on making sales, one of sales. That's not how you build a profitable business nine times out of 10. So in some industries you can get away with it, but more often than not, if you want to be profitable, you need customers. There's a difference between making a sale and having a customer base. Customer base, it's people who buy from you often, people who come back to your website consistently and make purchases. And one of the ways, not the only way, but one of the ways to build a customer list is by having an email list. These are potentially, they can be leads. So people who haven't bought from you yet, but have registered their interest in some way, shape or form in your business, or they could be past customers. So people who have bought from you and uh, you know they potentially might want to buy from you again. So you can reach out to them again. So let's say, for example, you're selling like some perfume or something or some aftershave or whatever it might be. Yes, you can put that product in terms of, you know, you can put that product and list it in Google ads or Google product listing ads. Uh, you can send the meta ads, you know, using Facebook and Instagram ads to, to drive new sales to your business. You can do SEO, all of those kinds of things that I speak about on this channel and in the formula, you can do all of that. But if you don't have a back end system to your business, which is the people who might not be interested in buying yet, but maybe they're interested, you know, maybe they leave their name and email address for a 10% off discount when they do decide to make a purchase. You know, you go to some e-commerce websites, for example, um, and a pop-up comes up and it says, hey, get 50% off your next order or get 10% off your next order when you submit your email. That is a way for them to get your details so that you're now on their list so they can remarket to you essentially they've done all the hard work getting you to their website and they know that with just a simple click of a button you can be off their website in a second so what they're trying to do is they're trying to retain your information so that they can contact you again and if you do buy then you become a customer they can retain your email address that way and if they're doing say you know black friday is around the corner or it's christmas or whatever is coming up they can send you an email and say hey look get 10% off of these particular products this Black Friday season or this Christmas period or whatever it might be. So there's a way of getting contacting you and getting you back to their website to make additional purchases. And I understand that, that email marketing can feel very overwhelming for entrepreneurs and business owners that are not well versed in marketing. And I kind of want to break it down. Like I've got a lot of tutorials um, and I will leave some in the description. I've got some coming up as well. I've actually got some partnerships coming up with some brands as well. And those videos I feel like will really help you. But in this video, I just want to hopefully try and make the whole email marketing thing a little bit less overwhelming for you. So there are a couple of changes that have happened recently. And the major change is that most of the email providers so you have Yahoo or you have Google, uh, you know, Gmail, for example, Hotmail, all of these providers. So everyone, well, most people have an email address. You know, um, I've got some Gmails, I've got some Hotmails. I'm sure you have some as well. Um, what they have done is uh, they've kind of put a new rule in place recently. Um, and that new rule is that you kind of have to be sending bulk emails. So if, you're, if you've got an email list or you're sending bulk emails to your customers, you have to have a domain email address. So you can't be sending bulk emails from, you know, for example, I can't do it from uh, sam at gmail.com. Like it just, it won't work. Most of your emails will go into the spam folder and most of the email marketing platforms as well that I speak about that are available for you to do email marketing, they won't actually allow you to send emails if you're just using a non-professional email account. Now, people have been speaking about this for years anyway. You know, have a professional domain name email address. So, for example, if you want to email me, my email is sam at daytips.com because my website is daytips.com. So, all you literally have to do is get a domain name. Register your domain name if you haven't already. Once, If you don't want to build your website out yet, 
which is what I did essentially. All I did was get a domain and a, a domain related email address for my new business. And I, I started building an email list before I even created a website. So yeah, you can go to one.com. There are other platforms as well. You know, there's namecheap.com as well. You can go and you can just get, an, just get a domain name. And then if you want to progress it into a website, you can connect that domain name to a WordPress website or to whatever website later on down the line. But the very first step, I'm trying my best here to make it not too technical. But I hope you guys can understand that you, you need a professional email address um, and you can simply get a domain from one.com, namecheap.com or wherever, you know, there's GoDaddy as well. They, they do some stuff. I'll leave some links in the description down below if you don't have a domain already and you want to go and, and, and grab a domain, uh, whatever your business website is or you want it to be, then grab a domain. If you already have a website, then wherever you got your domain from, you should be able to create email addresses from your domain. Uh, and then you can kind of, you need to connect your email address. So mine is sam at daytips.com. I had to connect that to my email marketing software. So the, the email marketing software that I use is Aweber. I use it because um, it's just convenient and I feel like it's really simple to use. It's so intuitive. And obviously, if you want a, a more robust email marketing software because you've got loads of subscribers, then you can use a CRM. And I'm not going to go into what that is. Uh, if you don't know what that is, then this video is, this video is perfect for you because this is a beginner's guide to email marketing. So there are other you know, email marketing platforms out there. You've got Aweber, you've got MailChimp, you've got Constant Contact, you've got Active Campaign. There's, there's so many. But if you don't have an email marketing software, I recommend signing up for Aweber. You can use my affiliate link, daytips.com forward slash Aweber. And I'm not just promoting them because I'm an affiliate, because uh, you can actually start an account for free now. And that wasn't the case when I first started this YouTube channel. You know, they, they didn't have a free plan, but MailChimp did but they now have a free plan. So you can actually start growing your email list without spending any money. Now, obviously the free plan is limited in terms of what you can do, but um, you know, you can just get yourself started, you know, with Aweber. But the reason why I like to, I could promote any email marketing software. They're not sponsoring the video, so I could promote any, but I genuinely use it myself, Aweber, and I recommend it to even family and friends because I feel like it's just very simple, especially for someone who is a beginner. And I actually have a full tutorial on how to use Aweber as well. Again, I'll leave that in the description down below. So those are the two things you need. First, you need a domain email address. Second, you need a email marketing software. I recommend using Aweber. Again, video tutorial and links in the description. Um, but if you're already, if you already have an email uh, software that you use, MailChimp or Active Campaign or whatever it is, that's absolutely fine. You can continue using that if you're, if you're finding it helpful. Um, so those are the two things that you need to kind of like set up. So the third thing that you need to kind of ensure that your uh, managing and you know, your list is, is healthy and it's, and it's going well in terms of, you know, I know the question was, you know, nurturing the list, how do you nurture the list and so on and so forth. But if you are really particular about how people get onto your list, then nurturing your list is, it becomes easier. So in these email marketing softwares, you can do something known as a double opt-in in the settings feature. Um, and again, all of this will make, will make so much sense to you when you check out my Aweber tutorial, because I go into depth in, in it but you can do a double opt-in, which essentially means, let's say uh, you're giving away something for free. So for me, I give away the formula. People go to my website, they can download the formula for free, teaches them how to market their business online using email marketing, SEO, paid marketing, social media, whatever it might be. And you might want to grow your email list by giving away something for free. But what you might want to do is do a double opt-in so that when you download that, when they download that thing, they get an email saying, hey, you've registered your interest in downloading this or being part of this email list. This is just an email to confirm that you actually want to be on the list. And then they have to click confirm. It's an extra step and not everyone's going to take that step. But what it does is it guarantees the people who are on the list actually want to be there. So you're building a, a more of a quality list 
people are less likely to unsubscribe. But don't worry about unsubscribes either because people will unsubscribe. It's just the nature of things. Don't take it personally. Uh, people will, will unsubscribe from your list because they're maybe just not interested in what you're doing anymore or whatever the case might be. So don't worry about people unsubscribing from your list. So if you get people, if, if you make it harder for people to get on the list, then you can almost qualify that the people who are on there are people who actually really want the information you're about to send them rather than people who are just just kind of casually, you know, scrolling through the internet. And it also makes sure as well that people are giving you their correct emails. So if people just, they don't really want to be on the list, but they want your free download or your whatever you're giving them for free, they might put a fake email in so that they can just get your freebie and then basically bounce essentially. So that stops people from doing that as well when they have to confirm that it's their right email address. Um, so, you know, what, what you can do as well is um, make sure that you're sending an email to your list often. That's the next step is once you're building your list and people are subscribing, they're opting in, you know, um, and, you, you know, you've got a subscriber base there. Make sure you're actually reaching out to them often. It doesn't have to be, you know, multiple times a week. It can even be every other week, you know, but but I would say every I'll say once a month is an absolute minimum to be emailing your list, because if you if you leave it too long, people might forget that they subscribed. And then when you send them an email, they think it's spam. They mark it as spam and that can hurt your deliverability. So if enough people are marking your emails as spam, you know, when they, when it goes into their inbox, if they're saying this is spam or they're, they're deleting it, they're not opening it then that is a signal to Gmail, Yahoo and Hotmail and all of those things. It's a signal that your emails are, are spammy. And so what you might find is a lot more of your emails end up in the spam folder rather than in people's inboxes. So you want to make sure that you're emailing often enough so that people remember who you are and they remembered why they opted into your emails and so on and so forth. So the, those are kind of some of the essentials. The next thing that I would say is to make sure that your email address is connected to your payment gateway. So if you're collecting payments via your website using Stripe, using PayPal, uh, using Square, whatever method you're using to collect payments from your website, there is, a, there is a way for you to connect that payment gateway to your email marketing software. So for example, if, you're, if you use Aweber, it's simple. You know, you can connect it to those marketing softwares. Um, to those payment gateways. And if there isn't, if you're using a, a payment gateway that doesn't connect to the email marketing software you're using, then you can use a platform like Zapier, essentially. So Zapier is basically a website platform that allows you to connect uh, one website to another. So um, it just kind of breaks it down. Again, I'm, I'm trying my best here to, to break down what is kind of a technical topic into something that's not too technical. So hopefully you guys are still with me and I haven't lost you. Um, but essentially that's what you need. And another way of kind of like ensuring that your email is kept clean and that your email is you know maintained is maintaining the quality of your emails. So make sure that you're sending people relevant information to what they signed up for. If someone bought a specific product, then categorize that person in that product. You know, maybe you can create tags as well. So when someone buys a particular product, they don't just go onto your general email list. They go onto either a specific list that categorizes them into the products that they bought, the products that they're interested in, or you can tag them. So when you send emails, you can send emails to people that are relevant. So let's say I had two, two uh, free giveaways. One was the formula and the other one was like a an SEO specific free giveaway. Someone downloads that SEO specific free giveaway, I want to make sure that they're getting SEO related content so that it means that they're more likely to open um, and yeah, more, more deliverability is going to be better because if, if they're getting emails that are not related to what they signed up for or, per, or things that they bought, they're a lot more likely to unsubscribe or mark your emails as spam or not open your emails. And it's important that as many people as possible are opening your emails when you build your list, because if people like open rate is important as well, the same with someone marking your email as spam. If the majority of your list, like say 70%, 80% are not opening your emails, then that is a, another indicator to the email softwares like 
you know, Yahoo and Hotmail and so on and so forth, that your emails are not, they're not um, useful enough, basically. And there's a possibility that your emails end up in more people's spam folders. So you want to stay away from that. You want to make sure that you get high open rates, you know, that a lot of people are opening your emails. So those are a couple of things that you can do. Um, hopefully that wasn't too technical because I didn't want this video to be too technical, but speaking about email marketing it is a technical topic. And I know some of you might feel overwhelmed. So what I will do is I'll leave my playlist to email marketing in the description down below. And those of you who are really serious about it, uh, let me know if there's any way I can help. Um, then I'll do my best. I'll suggest certain videos. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me directly. Um, but there will be videos I do in the future that kind of go more into the technical side of things as well. So the more of you who are struggling with this or who are really focusing on this and you want to know how you can improve um, and you let me know in the comments or in send me a message, then I'll prioritize getting those videos out as well. So the last thing I'll say before I wrap this video up is some of the metrics you want to be looking out for in your email marketing. So you have open rate, which we've kind of spoken about already, the, the percentage of people who are opening your emails, you have click through rate as well. Those are people who are clicking the links within your, your emails. And those are the two main metrics that you're going to be using to determine how valuable your emails are and how active your email list is. The people who are buying from you often and the people who are, you know, who are engaging with your brand and with your business. So you wanna make sure again that you're sending emails regularly enough so that people remember who you are and that they're opening your emails. But you also want to make sure that you um, have a catchy headline in subject line when you're sending these emails as well. So don't just send a random subject line. Like think, what can I put in the subject line that people that will make people open? And then when you're writing the body of your text, you know, what can I make, what can I write or what can I put in this email to make people actually want to engage with the business and want to click? A good thing to do is join some email lists. So think, I would say, who, is, who are some of the biggest players in your industry? So who are some of your biggest competitors? They can be direct competitors or indirect competitors. See if you can join their email list and take a note of how they write their emails, look at their subject lines, look at their, the body of their content. And you want to be analyzing this. This is something that I do often. You know, I look at competitors, I look at different companies or some of the biggest companies in the world, see how they're sending emails. Can that give you inspiration for your next email send? So these are the kind of things you really wanna keep in mind. Again, I'm gonna be putting more videos out to help you guys out as much as possible with your marketing for your business. These are the kinds of things that I go through with my clients uh, and some of my clients are you know, huge companies. Some of my clients are everyday entrepreneurs. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to try and keep you up to speed with what's working, what you need to be thinking about. Um, hopefully this wasn't too technical. I will be coming out with more technical videos on the topic as well. But this was aimed at some of you guys who are a little bit more beginner level. Again, links will be in the description. Hope this brought you value. Until next time, have a great day and I'll see you soon.